You talk about Hamas setting a trap that Israel must avoid falling into. Um, in other words, in terms of its response, what do you think the proportionate response should be from Israel? Well, that's a very good question. Very difficult to define, of course, because ideally a proportionate response uh, destroys the Hamas uh, infrastructure and leadership and capability to attack Israel uh, without significant civilian casualties and without creating a humanitarian crisis for millions of people. Now, you only have to say that to think, well, that's very hard to do in a small space in Gaza. Um, with two million people there, and even though many will leave uh, over the Rafah crossing to Egypt, uh, most of them are still going to be there. So it is very difficult to do, um, to respond with wisdom, but also effectiveness, uh, which is what I'm calling for. But, you know, it's not totally hopeless, because my argument in my column really is that um, there's a, there are a great many positive things happening in the Middle East as a whole. And it's because of that that you have this, um, this attempt to bring down the ceiling on everybody, really, which is what the Hamas attacks are. They are intended to completely upend the entire situation in the Middle East, to create war on multiple fronts, to make Israel lash out in all directions. And so it's a response to quite a positive trend. And that's where the, the long-term hope is that those positive trends continue. The, the problem, I suppose, here is, and, and you know, we are speaking, William, to on a daily basis to people who've been caught up in this uh, in terms of the initial attack um, in Israel to the granddaughter of an 85-year-old woman who was abducted on a on a, a golf buggy, um, to, to a woman who hasn't heard from her son since he went to that music festival. These are the people who have been initially affected by, by this particular incident. And yet what is going to happen um, in, in Gaza uh, seems to be, well, it's, 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 it's difficult because Israeli IDF people that have come on this program have said, this is regrettable, but there is nothing we can do. This is Hamas's fault. But many of the Palestinian people didn't choose Hamas to necessarily represent them. They're, they're kind of, they're kind of stuck. And is that something that we just have to accept? Well, they are, yes, they are, they're the they're very innocent people. A lot of those Palestinian uh, people sitting in Gaza, just like the Israelis who were, you know, the young people who were at a dance the, and so many others on the Israeli side of the border uh, who were murdered uh, over the weekend. These are all innocent people, uh, absolutely. So yes, unlike um, Hamas, who set out to kill and capture and hold hostage as many civilians as possible, um, Israel will be held to a higher standard. That's inevitable. It's a, uh, it's a democracy. It's a country with close links with the West. It will be held to a higher standard. And it has to try and I think it, it does. Israel, for instance, gives notice that it is going to attack a building um, and so that people can get out. That is its general practice. But it's going to be sorely tested in that regard. And it's really important there isn't a wider wall, you know, on the on the northern border of Israel, if that can possibly be prevented with Hezbollah uh, or with an explosion of violence in the in the West Bank. Otherwise, the whole Middle East goes backwards. Mm. So it's very difficult. You know, your questions are quite right. It's extremely difficult. But at the same time, Israel can't just do nothing about it. They can't say, well, we'll, um, mm. okay, Hamas can continue to exist. They are going to have to go out and just try to destroy Hamas. That is, um, that, that is inevitable. I don't think, I don't think it would be right to, to try to uh, restrain them from doing that. 